how many likes is it going to take for me to rock a Bully Maguire look for an entire Spider-Man update? I think 10k would do it. Now dig on this. See you, chump. You'll get your rent when you fix this damn door! Gonna cry? I'm gonna put some dirt in your eye. You're trash, bro. You got any with nuts? Let's get to the movie news. Some of the movie news that I as Bully McGuire is gonna bring you today is of course some Spider-Man No Way Home talk. As I promised, I would rock a full Bully McGuire look the next time there's a Spider-Man update. Paddington 3, the Super Mario movie with Illumination. That is so much more. So I'm gonna need you guys to leave me your opinions down below with everything we discussed here today. And you know what? Comment at your own risk, cause that was Bully McGuire. I might just go ahead and roast you in the comment. First movie news story that I want to get into here today is a celebration of YouTubers winning because we have here the announcement from Deadline that YouTuber Chris Stuckman to make horror movie Shelby Oaks about missing paranormal investigators. This is awesome to hear right here that someone like Chris Stuckman finally made his dreams come true and he's going to be making a movie. I followed Chris Stuckman for years, even before I had my own YouTube channel. Of course, he's one of the people that inspire me to do my own thing, and I've been following him and knowing that he's been taking the steps to pursue his filmmaking career a little further with going to film school, making some short films, and man, started from the bottom, now he's here. This is awesome. Some details about this upcoming movie. It says that he's gonna be the writer and director. It says the project will chart the story of a fictional mid-2000s US paranormal investigator team called Paranormal Paranoids. Multiple found footage videos have surfaced online in recent months which have prominent horror and ARG alternate reality game fans to speculate about the veracity of the case and the whereabouts of the investigators. One video uploaded last week appeared to show the abduction of one of the group known as Riley. I think this is a big deal for a couple of reasons, man. It, it just goes to show you if you go ahead and put your voice out there, practice, you don't have to really go to a fancy film school. I'm sure it helps out and it'll get you the experience you need, but you yourself grabbing a camera, making a short film, putting in that time, you could end up to where Chris Stuckman is. He's someone who had a very complicated upbringing. He posted a video talking about his religious past and why he almost had to quit YouTube, which I think is some heartbreaking stuff. So it makes me even happier to see him accomplish this. And I hope he does great things because that's another stigma I feel with YouTubers. A lot of times I don't get screeners. I don't get invited to do stuff so I can make content for you guys because I say I'm a YouTuber and a lot of companies think, oh, YouTubers are scum. They're nobodies. They're just delayed ground low celebrities or something. So one of the reasons I hope for Chris to succeed is for the day that I eventually want to make a short film or try out there that people take me serious when I go, that Chris did it. Maybe this Chris can do it. Nonetheless, I'm excited for this, especially it being a horror movie. I know he's as big of a horror fan as I am, so I hope this comes out good. How do you guys feel about YouTuber Chris Stuckman making his first movie, Shelby Oaks? Next movie news story is a movie that definitely needs to be made because it will cure humanity. It will even cure my bully Maguire. Is we have Deadline reporting that Paddington 3 will begin filming in early 2022. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I absolutely love the Paddington movies. I think they're just so heartfelt, joyful, little fun fun family movies that I was never expecting to be as good as they became. I remember going in to watch the first Paddington thinking, all right, let's see what this is. And then was like, man, this bear is adorable. I like this. Second Paddington movie, all oh, sequel suck, no way. It surpassed it for me and for the longest time was one of the only movies on Rotten Tomatoes that held 100% till someone had to come in and bully McGuire it. But admittedly, I'm kind of nervous for Paddington 3 this time around because I think the reason those first two movies really worked out is because of director Paul King. And it's already been reported that he's not set to come back for Paddington 3. Instead, they're going to get a different director to come in for this movie. And uh, I would really have liked Paul King to come back, have a perfect trilogy of family movies. But here's hoping Paddington 3 lives up to those expectations. How do you guys feel about it coming in the works in 2022? And do you think it'll come out to be a good movie? Something I want to touch upon a little bit here is we got a new international trailer release for Space Jam A New Legacy. Now, there's a reason I bring up Space Jam A New Legacy is is because over the past couple days, I went ahead and filmed what I hope to be a really fun and insane video. I'm gonna be posting it later in the week, but I really hope you guys check it out whenever it launches. But back to this international trailer, there's a couple of interesting moments in here that I think should really hype you up, because this movie comes out next Friday, 
to HBO Max if you have that streaming service or movie theaters. And again, it just goes to show us how much they've been hiding in the trailers and the marketing material that you should really expect a lot of surprises in this movie. For one, they show us a couple of more movies that the Looney Tunes are going to be invading in this film. Like they already released a clip of them going into the Matrix. But then we get a quick glance of the Casablanca scene. This is going to be interesting to watch since we know it was originally supposed to be with Pepe Le Pew, but then they've edited that scene to be a different character. I also do like how there's this board meeting happening I guess before they go into the Warner Brothers movie verse where you see all the movies that'll probably be referenced once LeBron James and Looney Tunes go out you can see the Joker Batman Begins the Flash the Mask Suicide Squad Harry Potter Willy Wonka then they even show flashes of other movies like Austin Powers was the last time you saw Austin Powers in a trailer like this saying oh yeah baby the other interesting part to me though was this little snippet of DC footage because we thought the only Batman stuff we were going to get is LeBron James and Bugs Bunny as Batman and Robin. But here, they show us a 3D animated Batman that I don't think we've seen in any other form. And to me, it even looks like we're going to be going into the Batman animated series show because we got the police blimps, the red sky that really seems like the Batman animated series. From there, another really awesome shot is we got freaking Gremlins here. I have been waiting for a Gremlins reboot. And in this little snippet of footage, they show us a couple of Gremlins. Gremlins. That's someone we have not been seeing in any of the marketing materials. So that's kind of cool that they showed them here. Even more funny, Bugs Bunny and LeBron James in the Mad Max universe because like what the hell is going on with LeBron James's hair right there. I get so many comments about supposedly LeBron wearing fake hair and whatnot. Well, there you go, LeBron hair haters. He's kind of bald in this one, so use that at your will. So I think this new international footage has me even more hyped up. I hope it got you guys hyped up. What did you think of the footage for Space Jam New Legacy? And please stay tuned for that video I got for you guys this week. One more thing before we get talking into the Spider-Man news here is we have to talk about an update on the Super Mario movie. If you guys don't know, there is an animated Super Mario movie in the works coming from Illumination Studios that Nintendo is hard at work on. And not only did Nintendo go ahead and announce today the new Nintendo Switch OLED that I was hoping was 4K, but it's still sweet. Gonna get my hands on that for sure. But we also had Nintendo come out and say that the CEO of Illumination Studios, Chris Milandrotti, is going to be officially added to the board of directors for Nintendo. And I think this is a pretty huge deal, but here's what Nintendo had to say about this. The process of making visual content and developing games share some of the same ways of thinking, but there's also differences. The movie business, including distribution, is in a period of transformation. We think that asking for Chris's input as an expert with many years of experience in Hollywood will be great help to us in the future. Basically what Nintendo is saying here that yes we've been making video games for a long time, we've been making video game systems, but if we want to survive further and expand this brand out is we got to make some visual content whether that means movies or TV shows. And that should let you know who's gonna be making all that stuff. It looks like it's gonna be Universal and Illumination Studios specifically. So I'm still super curious how the Super Mario movie is gonna come out looking with them, even just visually how it's gonna look. But the fact that Nintendo said here that they've been working with this guy for five years and it's gotten to the point that they trust him so much that they added him to Nintendo's board of directors as their main go-to on how to handle their visual content. That should really show you how good the Super Mario movie is going to be or at least how good Nintendo thinks they have done it. The other thing is we should start hearing some real serious news about this Nintendo movie soon like posters or little footage because like this movie is set to come out in 2022. That is a couple months away and we have still seen zip nada. But you guys hear about this. The CEO of Illumination Studios is added to the board directors of Nintendo. Does that give you more faith in the Super Mario movie up and coming? All right, moving on to Spider-Man No Way Home news. We have to talk about this. There have been more details that have come out about the film and I'm just gonna say here a spoiler warning a lot of the stuff we've already talked about I don't think this completely ruins the film for anybody Especially if you have been watching my updates because a lot of the stuff we've already touched upon But this doesn't give away any endings or huge surprising twists It's all stuff we've been hearing about and I just finally want to break it down further So we had here scooper Daniel RPK who has been the one to tell us when all these movie trailers have been coming out So he has some sort of reliable hand in Hollywood where he gets this information and it ends up being right, but I 
also want to acknowledge the man has been wrong here and there. Like I remember he came out with the plot for the Sonic movie and it was completely wrong for what it turned out being. So one of the things he continues to confirm is that yes, Peter's life will be ruined because his identity is out there and Matt Murdock will be his lawyer. This is something that we've been hearing for a while and there's been many reports coming out that he's going to be part of the movie and I feel like this makes a lot of sense and it's also Marvel's way of reintroducing Daredevil because I know people hate to hear this but the Netflix show and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D is not canon because Kevin Feige never had a direct hand in making those products. That was when Marvel was at two separate divisions, one making movies and one making TV shows. And now Kevin Feige is in charge of all of that, both movies and TV shows. So Spider-Man No Way Home will be the thing to reintroduce Matt Murdock. Well, they'll change the origin up a little bit. They'll take things inspired from the Netflix show, but at the end of the day, they'll change it up to be his own thing. Also, I don't expect Daredevil to suit up in this movie. I think he's just gonna be in his lawyer outfit and it's just a cameo probably for an upcoming Disney Plus series or maybe his own solo movie straight to Disney Plus. The other thing he mentions here is again, what we've heard is that Peter goes to Doctor Strange to find a spell that he can go ahead and erase the memories of people knowing that he's Spider-Man. But this is where it's new information that I didn't hear about where he says something goes wrong with the spell and they break reality and bring Spider-Man villains in other dimensions into the MCU. I think that'll be interesting if that's true, that a spell meant to make people forget about Spider-Man ends up making Spider-Man villains come up because that's how the Sinister Six will be introduced. There'll be multiverse characters from different Spider-Man movies. Heck, specifically the ones he says that'll be here is Doc Ock from Spider-Man 2. That's Alfred Molina. We know that's confirmed. He also says Sandman from Spider-Man 3, Green Goblin, Spider-Man 1, Lizard from Amazing Spider-Man 1, and Electro from Amazing Spider-Man 2. Now, do note those are only five that he listed there, but I'm 100% sure that the sixth and final member is going to be Scorpion because they set him up and we even seen him in Lego set so it would make sense that he'd be the final rounded out character but even that itself is kind of confusing because Sandman and the Lizard didn't die in their Spider-Man movie Sandman dusted away on his own the Lizard was put in prison so this lets me think they're probably going to end up changing some things and they're not going to be the exact characters from the Sam Raimi and Amazing Spider-Man movies. But they'll just take these characters, get inspired from what we saw, but change up their stories. But I think that'll just end up being more confusing. The other thing here is the way they escape the prison, because once these villains start popping into the MCU, Doctor Strange rounds them up and puts them in a prison. And I absolutely hate this, and I hope it makes sense in the movie if it's true, is that eventually Tom Holland comes into this prison, sees all these bad guys, asks them, hey, why are y'all trapped here? What's going on? And they all mention, how oh well in the multiverse there's other people just like you who are spider-man they killed us they're evil and now dr strange wants to send us back to those realities and we'll automatically die if that happens which makes peter feel guilty sympathize with them i guess that's him still dealing with the aftermath of mysterio and people calling him a murderer so he fights dr strange and sets them free which of course goes wrong and then that's when tom holland spider-man needs to go ahead and get andrew garfield tom mcguire to round up this Sinister Six, and the final battle will be on the Statue of Liberty. It sounds awesome in some parts, like that Statue of Liberty fight is cool. The reason to bring Toby and Andrew I think is cool, but the way they break out and the confusing manner of how they're in, I'm like, I don't know if this makes sense. Okay, but where does the Spider-Man Doctor Strange suit fit in? Or why does he have the black and gold suit? Like, after we saw some of that leaked merchandise come out, I just got even more confused and did not believe these rumors anymore. But only time will tell. You guys hearing this now knowing what the leaked merchandise looks like, and this is the basic plot for Spider-Man No Way Home, do you believe it or do you think it clashes? I'd love to hear from you guys. But that is all the movie news we currently have going on right now, guys. I want to thank you so much for taking time to watch this video. Be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already for great movie news. Got some more content headed your way. Stay tuned for that Space Jam video. But as always, my name is Bully McGuire. Take care, chumps.